Hello everyone and welcome back for another discussion involving the MRI world. Today's topic focuses on the use of SAR reduction techniques, which is something you might have come across during your career as an MRI user. In this first video, we will provide a comprehensive introduction to the topic and we will address how to initially prevent those SAR conflicts that might arise once the scan is begun. So without further ado, let's talk about the SAR. We know that MRI involves the transfer of energy from a radio frequency pulse to the protons inside the human body and in particular to the anatomical area that we want to image. Much of this energy is absorbed by the patient's body tissues and this can cause potential eating, which might have detrimental consequences if not controlled. To measure the amount of power deposited by a radio frequency field in a certain mass of tissue, we rely on the SAR, a acronym for Specific Absorption Rate. The MR machine uses the SAR to kind of warn the user about a potential risk of eating, suggesting steps to reduce the amount of energy deposited in the patient's body tissues. This might appear as a message that the scanner can display prior a sequence to start, like the one we are seeing here at the moment, or this might also consist of an induced break that will prevent the user from proceeding with the scan for a certain period of time. To make sure this will not have a huge impact on our daily workflow, we need to understand what the options are to minimize the SAR from the very beginning of the examination. The first thing that we need to know is that there are three main modes of operation for a mass scanner as far as monitoring the SAR is concerned. These are normal mode, first level and second level. As you can see from this tab, in most clinical settings, we just deal with the first two, namely normal mode and first level. The use of second level instead is fairly limited at present as predominantly used in some specific research setting. So, what's the main difference between normal operating mode and first level? So, normal mode is that routine level at which most clinical MR scans are performed nowadays. And this is because it's generally considered safe for all the patients, regardless of their condition. Obviously, this comes with the exception of those patients with implanted medical devices that might represent an absolute contraindication in some circumstances. First level instead is generally defined as that operating mode where certain imaging parameters might cause physiologic stress, such as peripheral nerve stimulation, just to give you an example. Therefore, in these cases, active medical supervision is required to make sure that there is a careful assessment of benefits and risks. As we can see from this tab, according to the mode we decide to use, there are certain SAR constrictions that must be considered. Normal mode is a much more cautious approach compared to first level. Now, I know that which mode to select can vary from hospital to hospital. Some hospitals, they have written in their MR safety policies that only normal mode can be employed. Others instead try to keep it a little bit more flexible to be assessed on a sort of individual basis. What I generally believe is that it's quite common to see radiographers starting a scan with normal mode for then switching into first level to try to get rid of those potential SAR conflicts. The reason is that first level mode, as we've just seen, kind of slightly eases the level of restriction that is imposed in the normal operating mode. But my question for you today is, is this really necessary? Do we really need to switch from normal mode to first level to get rid of these SAR conflicts? The answer is actually not that simple, but there are definitely alternative options that we can try to pursue first to try to address the issues of the SAR. First option, using a lower field strength MR scanner. We know, for instance, that using a 3T MR machine might significantly increase the number of SAR conflicts that you might experience due to the fact that there will be a greater deposit of energy in patients' body tissues compared to the 1.5 Tesla. From my experience, I can easily say that there are 3T scanners 
where performing an MR pelvis, for example, it can become a real nightmare due to the number of SAR conflicts that you can experience. That obviously varies a lot according to the type of the patient that we have in front. We know that there are some conditions that affect the ability of dissipating eating, like for instance, the age of the patient, the size of the body, or if there are pre-existing elevated body temperature, like in case of fever. Now, the main drawback of scanning a 1.5 instead of 3 Tesla is that we might need to cope with a lower level of signal to noise ratio and therefore the image quality might not be exactly as the same potentially achievable at 3T. Once we have decided which scanner to use and we have carefully screened our patient, the first essential thing to do is enter the right value for the height and weight of the patient. I know this sounds like a silly advice, something obvious to do, but don't get me wrong, I think this is an action whose importance is generally quite underestimated. Sometimes due to the fast pacing workflow we are exposed, we tend to kind of estimate ourselves the height or especially the weight of a patient, but this should be definitely discouraged since the MR scanner is able to do an initial prediction of the SAR using a three compartment cylinder model, which means that according to some specific characteristics of the patient, like for instance, the height, the weight, the age and sex, we are able to kind of measure the exposure of the cylinders located within the scanner and do a kind of like an accurate prediction of this, of the potential SAR value. So, this kind of prediction, however, would be inefficient if we enter an approximate or an incorrect value. And this may obviously also increase the number of conflicts that we might have subsequently to face. During your career as an MR radiographer or an MR tech, one of your colleagues might have told you once to avoid positioning the patient feet first, but to generally prefer head first positioning. Happened before? If yes, there is a reason about it and is strictly connected with SAR. Let's say that your colleague has actually a point. Scanning head first comes with the benefits of dealing with less SAR conflicts compared to scanning feet first. And do you know why? This is strictly related with what we said before. The location of the cylinders integrated in the MR scanner can be accurately calculated only when the patient is positioned head first. When the patient is positioned feet first instead, the body region cannot be efficiently localized and therefore only a conservative estimation of the SAR can be made. Nevertheless, some patients might still experience things like claustrophobia related issues and therefore the benefits of scanning a patient feet first could still outweigh the drawbacks. As a result, I would say that as far as positioning is concerned, better to do a case-by-case -case evaluation. And this is the end of our first video about SAR reduction techniques. The second part will be completely focused on how to manipulate different MR parameters to resolve SAR conflicts and to overall reduce the SAR level. This will be addressed using some visual examples that will allow us to understand advantages and disadvantages of changing a specific MR parameter rather than another one. If you want to learn more about this, stay tuned, subscribe to the channel, follow everything MRI on our social media platforms, and guys, as usual, I will see you around.